My name is Colette Elwa, and my story is that I am Haitian blooded, but born in the United States, folkloric artist, educator. I have a dance company called Elwa Movement, and we perform folkloric traditional Haitian dance and also contemporary Haitian dance and African diasporic dance. I really enjoy um, linking together the connections that exist between the various and large standing cultures that exist inside of the African diaspora. Um, I like using the folkloric steps, each having its own meaning, to tell stories that will speak to contemporary audiences. Definitely the whole concept of diaspora. And that whole word is very, people are very interested in it right now. But to me, it means, it means both respecting the differences of many different types of people, but taking the things that are connected and similar, that are most important, and raising it to the forefront. Like in African diaspora dance, for instance, when the people from Africa who have been kidnapped and brought to the different places in the Americas to be treated as slaves, they, um, they came from different tribes and they had different ways of doing things, but the things that they did similar ended up becoming a new form, a new religion, a new culture per se. So it was an amalgamation of who they were different, as different cultures, and it came together and created this new culture. So that whole concept in a society today, or like in San Francisco, where we live with so many different kinds of people, kind of sets an example of a good way to get along, to respect people's differences, to pay reverence to it, and to also see the connection. The piece that I'm developing now is, um, is very much a baby <laughs> and in process. And is right now is many concepts, but the anchoring concept is the politics of poverty. I want to tell this story through a character called Sheep. There will be many stories for Sheep, you know, that will go on in the future of my of my life. But in this one, it will like African folklore stories do speak on a subject. Um, recall history's way. African cultural ways of dealing with certain issues. For instance, there's one that I just, in my research for this, I'm very excited about. It's called Homo in Africa. It's um, a ceremonial dance designed around laughing at hunger. So telling a story, using the concepts of African culture, of African stories, to kind of bring them together again, you know, so that it can tell a new, Story, or even just inform a new generation on their, on their history. And for especially for African Americans in this country, you know, our African American culture is in a way fabricated and handed to us, and we consume it as African Americans. You know, there's the typical concept of what an African, uh, African American culture, and you know, the first things that have come are usually negative stereotypes. And these are things that we carry and we start to perceive. It's only with learning, it's only with education, going to the places of Africa, places in the African diaspora, do you learn something different? For me, as an African American Haitian who went to go and just take some dance classes, <laughs> you know, apart from my culture, but that, there was a connection that definitely happened to folkloric dance. And like, oh, there is a whole nother story. And this is my story. I'm so proud of it. I can embrace this. The other thing I was like skeptical about. The way I develop my work is, um, comes from many different ways. Comes from many different ways. Sometimes, one, one piece that I created was a traditional dance called Yamalu. I was doing a traditional Yamalu dance to the traditional drumming. And it still kept feeling empty, like there was something wrong, something missing. And then 
my husband, he always says to, said to use grandma's hands. And then later, um, a very good friend of mine and mentor of mine also mentioned that. And then sometimes that's how I listen to God. You know, talking, and so I set the choreography to that music, and without changing any of the choreography, it fit perfectly, and the gestures even spoke to the words. So, to me, that was that was a moment where I was like, "Wow, that wasn't really me." <laughs> you know, that was kind of me, but that wasn't really me. That's one way. Another way I made work is. I just I, I love the old MGM movies and the grandness of them. And I even though this technological age is really exciting, the way people made things from like almost nothing <laughs> and then made it seem so grand, I I really appreciate that in this art form too. To think of something large, but then it kind of condenses down to to what it's going to be in this situation and the practicality of it, how much money I have or how much time I have to create the things by hand that need to give it a certain authentic look or to apply the ceremonial aspect of folkloric sacred dance to theater. I really enjoy um, when I've gone to research and you watch people prepare for a ceremony. It can take days and each step is particular in how you do it. And so to go about doing a show in that way too is very powerful and I really enjoyed that process and it turns it into something other than, you know, putting some dance on stage. The ideas and impression I'd like the audience to take away is um, another view, a different look of, you know, I would like to say sometimes her story, our, our story, our way of telling our existence, our, our way of speaking of ourselves. Um, I would like people to see a different perspective, to see the beauty of it, the richness of it. You know, hopefully they'll be moved up by a part, part hopefully, hopefully they'll see part of themselves in it. I work with many youth in the inner city and you, I'll do, I'll show them folkloric steps. And they'll show me contemporary steps that look exactly like folkloric steps. And do folkloric steps with a type of technique that I'm not teaching them that is coming out of them naturally. There's something to folkloric dance and music that managed to stay in the blood, in the genes. And and when you live in a culture where you have been part of the group that is oppressed and now you're retracing your history through music and dance, it's very important for the person stepping into all of that to be very conscious of what they're stepping into and to do it with a type of delicateness and respect. That's how I feel about that. What do you love about the dances that you do? Oh, um... I love that they make me feel, I love that they let me release, I love that they connect me to who, my, to my root, I love that they connect me to the Almighty, I love that they're communal, I love that they're based in wisdom.